Today we're going to look at cash flow forecasting. Cash flow forecasting looks at all the money which is going to come into a business and all of the money which a business is going to spend in a business in the future. Hence why it's called a forecast. Standard level doesn't really do an awful lot of finance, so uh, this tends to come up on uh, your exam papers a lot, along with break even. For higher level students, you cover a lot of finance. So you've probably only got about a one in four, or one in five chance of cash flow forecasting turning up in your exam. But nevertheless, it is very important for you to know what, what it's about. Um, I have prepared a very, very simple cash flow forecast. Um, cash flow forecasts help businesses identify when they're going to have problems. You'll see from this business that this is a seasonal business. Um, it tends to sell most in around November and December and maybe spends a little bit more in October, November. All right, so it has, as you will see, a cash flow problem. Okay, and what we will try and do is we'll try and solve that problem. Okay, but first we'll just look at how the cash flow forecast is laid out. Okay, so on the top, what we have are the receipts, then we have the payment, and then we have like the summary at the bottom. Um, and across the top we have the various months. Okay, and I've only done four months. In the final exams, the uh, cash flow forecast um, might be a four or six mark question. You only have about eight, nine minutes to complete it. It's unlikely it's going to be as detailed as this. Um, but nevertheless, I've put more detail on it. Uh, and I will kind of explain why I've put more detail on it. Okay, so we title this uh, receipts. That just means money in. And then I have decided that the business has money coming in uh, uh, in the form of either cash deals or credits. Credit is when people buy something today but they don't actually pay for it until later. In this example, one month. And I've said that 80% of this business's customers take one month's credit. Uh, also, I've included the business uh, sell some old assets in October. The payments, the money out, uh, obviously the business has to purchase stock. In September, buys new equipment. There are wages, there are electricity. Electricity, in many instances, can be paid once every three months. Sometimes it's paid every month. I say every three months. Every. Advertising only occurs from November uh, and in December because it's a seasonal business. Other expenses, I just said, are 2000 Okay, so what we have in September, the total money in is 10000 The total money out is 18000 the opening balance is 4,000, and then we have this net cash flow figure. Net cash flow is just the difference between the 18,000 and 10,000. So the business is 10,000 coming in and 18,000 going out. Obviously, it's spending 8,000 more than it has coming in. So, hence why we show it in brackets. Okay, so 4,000 plus minus 8,000 then means that the closing balance is minus 4,000. Okay, the closing balance at the end of one month becomes the opening next month, then you can see here the amount of money in during October is 12,000, the amount of money out is 8,000, so obviously 8,000 taken away from 12,000 is 4,000, so that gives us the closing balance of zero. Okay, so you can see that the closing balance um, for three of the four months is a negative. Now, this is where we want to start using words like surplus and deficit, okay? The business starts September with a 4,000 cash surplus at the bank, okay? Um, in the closing balance for September, for November, and for December are minuses. We will call those deficits. Do not say the business is making a profit or the business is making a loss. Cash and profit are two completely different things, okay? Um, how they're calculated is done completely differently, and we'll talk about that in a different uh, video, okay? But simply put, the cash flow forecast looks at all the cash in and all of the cash out. The profit and loss account doesn't. And there's three very simple ways in which we can show how there, there is a difference. Each business starts the year with zero profit. Every single business in the world starts with zero profit. All right, you can see here, this business starts with an opening balance of 4,000. 
So that's difference number one. Difference number two would be when you sell old assets, that doesn't appear in the profit and loss account. Okay? And when you buy new assets, again, that doesn't appear in the profit and loss account. Okay? But as I say, we'll look at that in more detail um, on a different video. Okay, now, how can we try and solve these problems? Because this business may well go to the bank and say, Mr. Bank Manager or Mrs. Bank Manager, can you lend us money? We have forecasts that we're going to need help. So the bank manager may well look at this and say, well, do you really need to borrow money? All right. Although we've got some of these minuses here, how can we try and help you so you don't have to borrow money? Uh, so for example, at the moment you are offering 80% uh, of your customers one month's credit. Okay. What can you do to try and get more of your customers to pay more quickly? All right. So Because if customers pay more quickly, obviously then you've got more money. Okay. Also, the purchases of new inventory, this is why I've highlighted this in red. Uh, do you necessarily have to pay for, for things immediately? Uh, could you maybe get one month's credit yourself? So obviously that would uh, lessen the burden immediately. Uh, this new equipment, uh, do, you, do you need to buy it? Could you lease it or could you hire a purchase? Now leasing is obviously when you rent something and it never actually becomes your uh, possession, but it's spread to payments. All right. So instead of spending, say, ten thousand on big payments, leasing would mean that you're maybe paying five hundred per month over a four-year period or five-year period. Okay. Higher purchase obviously is when you um, eventually own the item. Similar to leasing, you spread the payments out over a long period of time, but eventually I'm sure uh, uh, you comes under your ownership. Okay. One of the problems, arguably with, also with credit sales, is if you sell anything on, on credit to people, they may not ever pay you. So then it becomes a bad debt which you have to write off because you haven't been able to collect the money from that person. Or you may end up having to use a factory company. And if you say you're owed $10,000 and you go to a factory company and you try and sell to them, they may offer you $6,000, okay? So you're not collecting all the money which is owed to, all right? Some of the other expenses, which uh, you've noticed here, uh, the reason why I've increased the uh, wages from 2,000 to 6,000 is because it's a seasonal business. Okay? Um, so if, there's, if you're selling more things in uh, September, you're likely to have more workers. Okay? Uh, the other expenses, again, that could be things like rent, rates, prop local property taxes, which tend to stay the same. Okay? I've highlighted sole trader up here because obviously the, uh, the owner may be able to put more money into the business. If the owner can't, well maybe they could consider becoming a partnership um, or consider moving towards becoming say a private limited company because again there might be other new shareholders investing money in the business um, which would obviously mean there'd be less need to maybe have to borrow money from the bank. Even if after, so let's say, into the buying things, or the buying things, if through the use of leasing, obviously that was 500, 500, 500, 500, this answer here would still probably be a minus figure, okay? So what will probably happen is the bank may offer something called an overdraft, which is short-term funding, all right? And that's partly because 20% uh, of this business's uh, sales come in cash, 80% come uh, from one month's credit. All right, so the, if 20% of their sales in December are 10,000, that would mean in January, the credit sales, which are received, would be 40,000. So the chances are in January, this will go back into being a positive figure. So in the short term, I think it might probably offer a bank overdraft here. So the reasons why businesses prepare cash and forecast, it shows good forward planning. Obviously as a forecast, it can be wrong. Unexpected events could happen, uh, which uh, means this is, uh, becomes null and void. Um, if there's an earthquake and your business falls to pieces, obviously the business is likely to stop. Um, but nevertheless, it does show good forward planning. Um, and working capital issues are identified. Working capital just means do you have enough money to pay your short term debts? Sometimes that's also called liquidity. So this is here to help a business try and solve its short term. Uh, cash problems. Please do not write about cash and profit as being the same thing. They are not. Okay? We will talk about this.
focus on the bigger picture.